Grab your terrain boxes, Wargamers, because today we are having the joy of terrain. I gotta build this, these oasis, these jungles to fit inside that box. My goal is to build a full desert of terrain, about two by two feet, in a three inch space. Three inch tall space, so got a little bit of extra terrain in the box there. You can see the Egyptian mummy, but one of the difficulties that I'm facing here is that I'm extremely limited in how tall to make this. So before I started building, I thought maybe I could cut this stuff down to size. If I make these trees about three inches high, well, I could just cut some off the trees. Wait a minute. And then I realized my bases can be put sideways. And I think there'll be room for those of you that watch the uh, the desert terrain tutorial. Let's build, I guess you could call it my last episode. I think I'm going to be able to put a couple of trees sideways and a couple straight up and down and squeeze a little more terrain into this box, squeeze a little taller terrain. Now, of course, first we have to trim off the excess flash. And of course, we're going to do it completely wrong. Kids always use a sharp blade Always cut away from yourself. It's a miracle I didn't slash my wrists here. And there have been a lot of times where I wanted to slash my wrists, but certainly not when I was having a great time building some new war game terrain. So we got a nice sharper and more dangerous blade here. And fortunately, we only managed to, to slit a little bit of the fingertips. Uh, I got a couple of gashes in my fingertips right now from doing it wrong. Do as I say, not as I do. So we trim off that little bit of excess plastic. These palm trees were pretty cheap. I think I got like 20 or 30 of them. Uh, I just bought them on Amazon. They're the cheap plastic trees. I think they go on, I don't know, birthday cakes or whatever. But the thing I liked about these is they have a little pin. You can see those at the bottom. And those are going to make the trees way more stable. Hey, there's Chicken Joe. Good to see you, Chicken Joe. Problem is the pins are a little bit too long. The masonite board that I'm using with a little beveled edge, I cut those to size and sanded them myself. A little bit of leftover from a, another project. It's, I don't know, three millimeters thick, maybe five. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't bend, doesn't warp. Uh, so what I did is I drilled out holes. I trimmed off a little bit of excess there and rather than just kind of Kind of bore you with all the, the nitty-gritty details. There you go. See the little holes I drilled out? Had to trim off the excess plastic on the bottom there. And then you can see a lot of rocks put into place around those trees. The trees, fortunately enough, are really good. They uh, Just a super glue, just a normal super glue holds those in place. I wanted a little more rigidity. So I grabbed a bunch of rocks, again, just straight from the garden. Super glued them down, super glued the trees to the rocks, super glued the rocks to the floor, super glued everything together. So all of those little terrain bits that you see there are fully locked together. And using real rocks, uh, you know, some it, it adds a little bit of weight to these. I, I like the weight, makes it harder for them to tip over. But the, the, the little terrain box we're going to be using there is, it's going to be kind of a heavy one by the time we put all this sand in there. Once again, uh, a lot of guys will tell you, oh, you should use uh, water to thin down PVA and water. I have no idea why they keep telling me to thin it down. Works great just like this. Uh, does it save a little bit of money? The Elmer's glue, this time of year with school just starting, that thing is like 50 cents. I am not worried about saving a little bit of money. And if it means... Uh, I think it's maybe a little easier to work with. It's a little runnier. I've never really had a, an issue with this kind of glue, particularly in this kind of application. I, I actually like the little bit of extra, um, what's what I'm looking for there, uh, viscosity that it has when you use it neat. And once I spread it around, get a nice thin layer, I always like to go back and add a little bit more in between the rocks where maybe some sand has blown in. So when I dump my sand, it'll really kind of creep up into all the little nooks and crannies. Uh, sand I'm using is just a beach sand. It's a local beach sand. It's a little bit, little bit coarse, but it'll work fine. Uh, provides a nice little ground texture there. Completely different ground texture than the drop cloth I'm using. It's all right. Everybody's going to know that it's desert. It's going to look like desert. 
you can understand it's desert, and if the colors don't match 100%, that's okay. This is a slightly rocky area. Oh, hey, you know what? We should probably fill that, that hole in right there. Uh, if you get too deep a hole, it's going to be really obvious. I, I wish you would have left, kind of looking back, wish that I would have left that empty. As you'll see, once we get down to the, I don't know if it's the next step, maybe two or three steps. We'll, we'll get there. So we're still kind of filling in some of the cracks there. A little bit of a, too big of a gap. Just another little bead of, geek of, of glue. And then I like to go through and all the little bits of sand that have stuck a little bit too high. They're going to give me a, an awkward texture. I just brush that off with a dry Q-tip. Those Q-tips cost, what is it, like a third of a cent a piece. Yeah, it's disposable. That's fine. And then we scrape off along that bevel edge to kind of clean it up. Give us a nice smooth boundary around it. We're going to do the same thing on this guy. And it's at this point, you've seen it. It's not rocket science. I'll say a couple of other things. I like to get a nice selection of sizes of rocks. I try to keep them mostly with the same texture. Most of the rocks that I've got around here, basalt rocks, they're, they're, they're fairly smooth. They just do whatever I find in the yard. That's what I'm using. You generally want to find a bunch of triangular rocks because particularly here where you're you're dumping them in. Oh, hey, there's our there's our paintbrush making another appearance for a large area that needs to be covered. Uh, that's a disposable paintbrush. It's maybe like a I don't know a dollar dollar twenty five. So if it saves me a lot of time of, of swabbing a Q tip back and forth, it pays for itself. Yeah, it's disposable, and uh, some people take exception to that. you got to reduce, reuse, recycle. Well, it's going to go in the garbage, and it's going to get burned. It's going to produce electricity. So our local power outlet is, is going to recycle it for me. It's going to have a wonderful second life powering uh, somebody's Xbox controller. And I think that's really the way that that uh, paintbrush would have wanted to go. You know, he, he gets to practice a little bit of creativity here. And uh, oh, be careful! Don't 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 nudge that too much. Uh, and there you go, off to the races again. Once you once you dump sand on, knock the loose stuff off. Most of the loose stuff is what you're knocking off. The oh, we gotta get that last side there. Yeah, get off. There we go. Knock off most of the loose stuff, but uh, yeah, a little little tippy tappy, and. Uh, there's still some loose on there. We got to wait for the glue to dry for another hour or so, but that looks pretty good, right? And, and that's really close to what you would see in the natural world in a windswept desert. Of course, the seeds are going to land wherever the wind, where there's a little eddy in the wind. And, oh, see, we missed, missed a little bit there. Sometimes the PVA can be hard to see. No problem. Just add a little more glue, thin it out. Nice and easy. So the rocks are going to form a nice leaf for the seeds to gather and grow a little grass. And the next thing you know, uh, you've got bigger trees growing there. And they add a little more visual interest. We'll paint those in a, a different color from the ground color just to help them pop a little bit more. Uh, there are guys that will tell you. Uh, now, one of the things I'm a little concerned about is painting these trees. You can see they, they already have a really nice color, but they do have a texture on the trunks that I like, and I definitely want to try to start over. Uh, I will be using a rattle can of paint, just uh, a regular primer. It's, I'm going to go with a dark brown on this one so that everything is brown, and I can just kind of bring the colors up from there. And if I miss any, it's okay. The shadows are going to be more of an earthen tone than a harsh black. I like to use black on the figures so that when I do a white dryer brush, those colors will pop a little better. The The brown that I'm using is is, is darn near black. Uh, it's the same brown that I used on the drop cloth. So that's going to help tie the entire terrain uh, assembly together. You're going to have that uniform base coat. And however I paint these guys, as long as I'm fairly consistent, you're going to be fine. It's going to look just fine. So here we go. Adding a little bit more there. Uh, my apologies on the centering on this video. Uh, a couple of rocks away from the big mass. Uh, not all the rocks are going to be in giant piles. Some of them are going to be off on their own. Um, 
as I was saying, I think I got the uh, camera a little bit off here. My, my angles are a little off and I don't know what we're doing there. I'm probably off yelling at the wife and kids. Uh, this is an interesting way to do this because I worked in bits and pieces, about 15 minutes here, 15 minutes there. I was able to just kind of leave the camera running for, for a couple of area, air, a uh, couple of minutes. And I didn't have to worry about the, you know, the dog barking and the parrot telling me it's time to go to bed and the, and the kids running around and watching TV. We could just kind of chit chat. So through the course of the day, I was able to spend a little quality time with the family, which is great when you can get this stuff done out in the open and still be a part of the family life, then it goes a long way towards uh, keeping things calm on the home front. And as a war gamer, you know that uh, keeping the home front happy is a good part of making things work smoothly on the war front. I think I kind of like this, this method as well because it gives me a chance to sit down and edit what I'm doing and give some thought to what it is I'm going to say. I kind of anticipate what the problems are going to be and uh, any surprises along the way. Uh, I've got a second chance to look at them. So here we are. We're, we're pretty much done with all of the vegetation. Let me just do a little bit of cleanup here and we'll bring those trees around so I can show you what it looks like. As I said, it's about 20 trees. It was maybe $10 on the Amazon. Uh, all the rest of the material was stuff I had laying around already, uh, whether it was the super glue. So I mean, altogether, you're probably looking about like 40 bucks for this whole thing, but it's mostly stuff that I'd cobbled together over the years. Had a couple of extra trees. That's what you're looking at right there. I just popped the tops off those trees. And now we're going to try to figure out what are we going to do with these. And... I think the first thing you do is you gotta kinda figure out what you're gonna do. And I just cut the fronds off and now I'm using a tacky, it's a gel style super glue. And I'm just grabbing one big palm frond and I'm looking for a, a little gap in between the rocks, in between the trees to stick that in. So you put a little dab of glue on the stem. You can see at the bottom there, some of the stems are longer than others, which is great because take the longest one you got and you see how deep that hole is. And if it's not very deep at all, then you go with just a one of the palm fronds that doesn't have a stem on it. Oh, we gotta break open a new tube of super glue. I think this whole project, I went through like three, three of those tubes. So here you go, you can see I'm dumping that on there and uh, getting a nice thick bead on the stem. And then I just kind of try to wiggle it in there however I can. Ideally, those those palm fronds are going to be horizontal. And again, with the fantastic camera work, you're doing a great job. But if it doesn't work horizontal, you just kind of worm it in there however you can. And of course, you're going to have a little bit of vegetation down low. Here I said, hey, you know what? This this is the literal top of a palm tree. But if we were to forget the trunk of the palm tree and just drop it on those rocks there, then you got a nice big bush. And now nobody can get through there. You've got a nice rectangular piece of rectangular. Eh, probably should have gone for more of a football shape or oblong. A little more naturalistic than a square like that. But uh, how was I supposed to know that? Like six months ago. It's all right. It's going to be fine. So well, that one didn't work. We're going to try a new one. And if you get a little bit too much glue on one of those guys, it's all right. So we'll speed the process up here uh, rather than bore you with every single minute. And uh, just keep plugging them in and you'll see there's a couple that are going to wind up being vertical. And if the camera would focus Hey, wow, autofocus is great. Don't you just love autofocus? This is making our life easier. A couple more palm fronds in there. And I realized when I was all done sticking those in there, it was a little too uniform. Uh, all those palm fronds look like the, the, the leafy greens from up top. And I thought, man, I wish I had just a little bit more variety. Uh, fortunately, I turned my head slightly to the left and realized I have a a sandwich baggie full of the plastic offcuts from aquarium plants that look a little bit different. So here in a couple of seconds, once we slow things down to uh, normal speed, once we're done 
doing some flash. You can see uh, a little bit of bright green that's a little bit different down there. Uh, let's take a look there's Chicken Joe, and you can see uh, how all of this stuff kind of ties together. You can see the bright green down at the bottom of those trunks. And it looks pretty smashing. We've got like two or three different kinds of vegetation down there. Uh, that is going to make it look a little bit more natural, a little bit more normal, and will kind of freeze frame. So you can appreciate how glorious this mishmash is. Now, as I said, I'm going to wind up just using a spray paint to... Uh, base coat all of this stuff. It's all going to be the same color. I don't know how that's going to work with these ve with this vegetation. My guess is that the rocks are going to take it like a champ, but you're going to see a lot of shadows where the leaves have blocked the paint. We'll just make do. You know, once we get in there and, and get to do the detailing, it'll be fine. And if the leaves themselves don't take the paint all that well, if there are little shadows from the spray paint, then we're not going to stress it because the good news is that those shadows can work. These are green plants. The leaves are green. So if I don't get the spray paint and I don't prime the green, then I'm going to have a little bit of extra green on my green plants. These are the kind of problems that you want to have. And these boxes here, I, you know, I dropped a ruler down there so you can see I was ideally uh, shooting for a, enough terrain to fill a two by two table. I think we have that and then some. In fact, a table with all of this stuff on it is going to be a little bit too crowded. The drop cloth that, that I have for my desert terrain is actually 30 inches. Is it 30? No, it's 32 by, I want to say 36 somewhere around there. So it's more like two and a half by three. It, I cut it to fit the countertop that you're looking at right here. And that 30 inches, I think is going to be great for basically any table that you want to play on. That's pretty standard width for the tables, maybe a little bit too wide for the folding tables you find at your typical convention. It's all right. It's got a couple of inches overlap on either side. Hardly the end of the world. Again, if that's the worst thing that happens to you that day, you're doing pretty good. Say thank you, Jesus, because if your drop cloth is a little too big is the biggest problem you got, you're doing fine. Had a great time. It was a great day off, a very productive day off from a wargaming perspective. I was able to get a couple more videos out to you guys. And again, these are not any particularly smashing or groundbreaking tips. But if you're in the mood for a little a YouTubing of the war game variety, and if you've never seen anybody do this desert, it can be very worthwhile. And who knows, maybe you picked up a trick or two, maybe you like what you see here, and maybe you don't, but at least you've seen it, at least it gives you something to think about. And, you know, top to bottom, this is a thinking man's hobby. This is not a hobby for people who just want to shut their brain off and not think about what they're doing. It's really more a hobby for people that are comfortable thinking about two and even three things at the same time, or trying to think three, four, five steps ahead. Yeah, I actually thought, wait a minute, do I really wanna put this vegetation on here before I spray paint it? Not really, but is there any way to take that vegetation off? Is it gonna be easier, is it gonna be harder? You know, I'm thinking about that even as I'm I'm, I'm figuring out which trees are going to go on which base and how to spread those trees, how to cluster them so that you get that, that desert oasis look, but still have enough room for the little metal dudes to run around and shoot each other and smack each other around underneath the shade of those trees. Thinking about that from the beginning, how big do I want to make these bases? Even before I knew they were going to be used for desert, I had a nice variety of shapes and sizes. Uh, I got a few more in the box. I need to build a couple of buildings. Again, it's the desert. Maybe it's the perfect desert for modern. I've still got Black Ops. I still want to run that yeah, eventually, but uh, we'll get there. Like I said, this is kind of a side project. It's a good way to keep me busy, keep me out of trouble, and keep me productive. At a time when we're stuck at home more than usual, uh, it's a great way to, to kill a day and chat with a wife and be there to help out and lend a hand on those little odd jobs here and there. And really, I think we're done. Uh, you'll see me painting one of these in a painting alone together. If you're ever bored and you don't have any movies to watch, it's getting harder to find stuff worth watching. I know if you're anything like me, and I know I am, uh, it's getting a little harder all the time. 
So here's a little something you can put on while you're doing your painting. And, uh, you know, wargaming fun with the joy of wargaming. Thanks for watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not. Do all this stuff. And in return, you are in my prayers.